I have a confession to make. Having been homeschooled traditionally, when I didn't know how to spell a word, my mother sent me to the dictionary, and that gave me an excuse to skip all my other work and still pretend I was learning. I'm not kidding you. Words are a favorite thing. And I was learning, um, actually, I didn't learn this recently. I was just reminded recently that there are five things that students can do, anyone can do, in order to make themselves a better and stronger learner. And since, well, that's your task at hand right now, I want to share those five tips with you. One is play around with words every day, learn more about them. Two is read silently to yourself. Three is read aloud to someone else. Four is read to someone, I'm sorry, listen to someone read to you. And five is to do a little writing. My mom used to give me a timer and make me write anything, fun things, silly things for five minutes a day. Usually I just kept writing. There's some really great websites to do that. I'm going to talk about that in another cast later on in the course of this quarter. But right now, um, I was getting ready to read one of your reading selections aloud to you. I was going through the lessons and they recommended, Connexus did, that I actually have Miriam Webster's open. Or actually, they recommend that to you, that you have Webster's open in case there are any words you don't know. And all of a sudden, at Miriam Webster's, I started finding all these hilarious and fun things, like uh, words they're watching. They're watching the word inspo. Everybody is cutting words off, uh, shortening them. We call this verbal economy. Um, we're making them quicker and easier to say, like perf instead of perfect, bogo instead of buy one, get one. You know, we're all about those. Well, um, they're looking at words like inspiration inspo for inspiration or um this one right here trying very hard with extra uh so and then there's the good the bad and the semantically imprecise uh and this is a fascinating little read and uh, there's so many places where you can go on on merriam webster's and just tink around and expand your words and discover some really fun things like a Bandersnatch, if you have not watched the new Black Mirror where you get to choose the outcomes to it, it's really fun. Bandersnatch actually comes from Lewis Carroll uh, and Alice Through the Looking Glass. If you've not heard uh, that Jabberwocky poem, you wear the Jabberwocky, my son, the eyes that, oh, flash. Oh, I should know this. I used to teach it all the time. It's such a great poem. But Bandersnatch is one of the monsters in it. So that's a word. Um, Op-ed, which is an opinion piece, op opinion editorial. Um, public domain, things that have been out of copyright. There's a 75-year copyright, and then everything else goes into public domain after that, unless the family renews it, and usually they don't. Uh, likeability is a big word right now. And then they usually have like some sort of weird word of the week, like who's ever heard of gynocracy, which is the political supremacy of women? Probably we've not heard of it because that doesn't happen very often. There are also words that are trending right now, words like clemency and gruesome and national emergency. These are words that people are looking up for some reason or are appearing all over the web and they're gathering them. So you can go over there and you can figure out what clemency is or gruesome or contentious or amoral, meaning having no morals, contentious being like to, like I could have been a contender, or like fighting kind of thing. Where's it end, by the way, in O-U-S are adjectives uh, like nebulous, um, which is a really important and fun word to use. Um, synergy is another funky word. Slumgullion, slumgullion, like okay, or end game. Um, then there's complicit being uh, possibly connected to um, the idea of tariff, um, words like Godspeed, Scion, and Noblesse Oblige, um, especially the Noblesse Oblige, that's another language. Uh, Latigo, Scott Free, Gaslighting is a big word everybody's using these days. Do you know what these words mean? And if not, just like have some fun and play around with them. I super love looking this kind of stuff up. There's all sorts of things here, like the word of the day. There are videos, favorites, and games. Um, so if you look at games, I've never done this before, but there's a winter words challenge. You can actually play this. We should play this, right? Uh, today's word of the day is demotic, by the way, if you didn't catch that on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, so here are some winter words. 
What's another word for a person who travels to an area of warmth and sun, especially in the winter? A gudgeon, a goal, a gulpin, or a sun seeker? I'm going to go with sun seeker. And I win. I actually do not know what these two are. I would have to look that up. Uh, Pogonip. Is that a dense winter fog containing frozen particles? Small drink of liquor taken to restore feeling? Uh, mythical creatures that feed entirely in the snow or an unusually heavy snowfall? Typically occurring later. I have no idea, so I'm going to go for a small drink. Nope. It is actually a dense winter fog containing small frozen particles. The month of December comes from a Latin word that refers to which month of the year? I'm going to go with 12th. Actually, it meant 10th. It was changed. There's that for me getting in trouble. Uh, outler, an animal left in house over the winter. Finger or toe lost to frostbite. Any item left buried in the snow or a warm jacket. I'll go with a warm jacket. But nope, it's an animal left in house over the winter. Um, Skidoring, a large professional skiing organization. A sport in which people wearing skis are pulled behind a horse or vehicle. A race of imaginary creatures in North mythology, similar in size and temperament to gnomes, and who travel on skis, scaring misbehaving children, or a skiing injury. I'm going to go with this one. Nope, it's a sport. See how much I do not know? It's just fun to learn these. Hibernacle. A shelter occupied during the winter by dormant insects. The pleasant feeling of warmth when re-entering the house. An unheated home, typically uninhabited. Uh kind of sore resulting from sleeping too long on one side. I'm going to go with the shelter. I finally got another one right. Uh, snowbird. Is that a cocaine addict? A type of finch? A person who travels in, to a warmer region for the summer? Or all of these? I'm going to go with all of these. Whoa! That's amazing. How about the word sitzmark? A depression left in the snow by a skier falling backwards comes from Joseph Sitzmark, famously bad skier. The German words for sitting in Mark, an erroneous translation of Telemark, or a Norse word meaning purplish bruise. I'm going to go with this one. Did it? How about cryophile? A person who weeps in cold weather, an implement icing locks, an organism that thrives in low temperatures. Uh, file means love, by the way, and cryo means frozen. So... I'm going to go, or a type of desert plant. I'm going to go with this one. Just based on what I knew about Latin, file meaning love and cryo meaning frozen. Now in the winter of our discontent is a line from the play by August Wilson, Eugene Ionesco, Thomas Nash, and William Shakespeare. It is Shakespeare. And by the way, just so you know, not only was this from Richard III, but the winter of our discontent became the title of an Ernest Hemingway book. If you are an animal and are estivating, which season are you spending? In a state of torpor and inactivity, usually winter, right? Oh, I failed. It would be hibernating and estivating. Weird. I should have known that. Which of the following is a Scottish word referring to the middle part of a night or the winter? A midrag, a how, a helly wally, or a twick? Um, I go with midrag. Nope, it's a how. In the how of winter. And this is going to get us really close to the last, to the point um, that we're going to make about why you need to explore words. Not only can you use what you know from Latin or from other languages you're learning, hopefully you've gotten a little Latin and Greek background over the years that can help you come up with a meaning of a word you don't know. Um, but also it can help you interpret or guess the other words. Sometimes you'll get it, sometimes you don't. Look at me. The dreaded flu is a shortening of the word influenza, which the following correctly describes where the word comes from. It's unknown. It was invented by Shakespeare in an attempt to write a word with a character's name. That's possible. Shakespeare invented a lot of words, but usually invented a lot of sayings, too. It's from a combination of the Old English words for chimney and wind, since diseases were thought to be blown through a chimney flu. Ooh. It's from the medieval Latin for influence or influentia, since epidemics were thought to be under the influence of the stars. I'm going to guess it's one of these two. Nope, it's the medieval Latin word. Should have known it. Last question. The word meaning, word means, which word means, of or relating to winter? 
autumnal, estival, hiemal, or vernal. So I know autumn is this, and now I know from that previous question that I didn't know before the estival is summer. Vernal is spring because we have the vernal equinox. So then it's going to be hiemal just by a process of elimination, and it goes back with hibernate too. So I really bombed this quiz, just so you know, but it was kind of fun to do. And that's not the only thing that you can do. There's all kinds of things. There's 19 words for cranky and disagreeable, in case you really need to know those, or the word of the year. Um, and there's just so much fun here. By the way, see this delicious, disgusting thing, the churpumple? That is made, I first heard about this like 10 years ago, at the Reading Market in Philadelphia. It is three pies and baked inside of three cakes and stacked up, which looks personally disgusting to me. So there you go. That's just a little bit of fun that you can do with words. And if you spend five minutes a day on each of those things, 25 minutes total, read to yourself, play around with words, read aloud to someone else, listen to someone read to you, and write for five minutes, you will improve your skills in all of your subject areas, my friends. All of your subject areas. Best of luck.